be the king um, front left. She is more of a, um, she works a lot of garden students. So she does like science, veterinary things and, and, and so on. In the middle front row, that's Dr. David Rowland. He has a sort of mass and physics background. That's he used to teach at ANU. Um, and obviously front right is Sheree Millen. And again, more of a teaching linguistics background. So, so we have a sort of, we cover a lot of what happens at UQ, um, but obviously students don't come to us for a lot of content uh, material. We were more around those general study skills, which we all cover. You know, it's, it's a happy bonus if you happen to get our field of study um, for the students. But okay, so what do we actually do? Well, we assist all UQ students. So that includes international and domestic. Uh, both those, those cohorts of students access our service on a regular basis. So we're not really, uh, we do cover the spectrum there. We also deal with the coursework students. So that's, you know, your undergraduate students, but also your coursework master students. That's sort of in between cohort that aren't doing the research, but they're not really undergraduate anymore. They're kind of in between. And we do see a lot of those particular students who are doing the sort of two year degrees. Higher degree research students. So we do work with PhD students and MPhil students. So we do work uh, through the CDF, the Career Development Framework for the Graduate School. So we do a lot of workshops on um, things like writing and literature review and, and meeting those milestones that they have. And we also work with, as I said, commencing and continuing students because those can be two distinct cohorts. Uh, commencing students come in very fresh, a lot of them out of high school or they haven't been in study for a while. Uh, coming back into a study environment can be pretty daunting if you've been away for it for 20 years or so. So we work with those, those students and we also work with the continuing students. Students who, you know, they're in their second and third year and they want to sort of, you know, improve their marks or, or, or something might be going wrong. And maybe they're on a progression warning or something like that. We will spend uh, work with those students as well to keep them coming. And we work across all the UQ campuses. Uh, so, you know, particularly with Zoom, that's made that that, that really easy to do. Um, but we also visit some of the campuses like Gatton, and I know Kevin goes out to Hurston and things like that. So we do try to get across. Um, but as, as you know, we're a fairly small team, so we do the best we can. All right. So in terms of how we help students, well, we obviously talk to, you know, we can talk to them about things like studying more effectively. Um, that's one of our big areas and how to manage the time around that, how to get the most out of, you know, prep and revision and taking notes and all that kind of stuff. Obviously managing their time and avoiding procrastination. That's a big one that students come to us for. They're losing motivation in a subject. Therefore, they start to manage the time a bit, you know, poorer. Or maybe they're just a really busy student with a lot going on. You know, they're working outside. They've got family, friends, commitments, all those sort of things happening uh, as well as studying full time. You know, we can sort of talk to them about how you might manage that, what, what good study habits will look like. Um, Research and write assignments of all types. So we work with all genres of assignments. So anything from literature review to essay to report writing to reflective writing, whatever it happens to be, we can certainly help students with that. Uh, right through from the very beginning, you know, task analysis, what are they actually asking you to do? Right through to, hey, you've got a final draft and you want some feedback on that. We can certainly provide that to the students. Um, developing reading strategies is obviously a big one at university in terms of managing time around that and how to get the most out of your reading, considering that's probably what you're going to be doing a lot of in your degree. So we talk to students how to manage that, how to make the most out of that time. Obviously, managing HDR projects. So we talk to a lot of sort of high degree research students about managing the relationships with their supervisor, how to manage the research process. For many, it's their, uh, probably the first time they've gone into research. And so that's difficult for them to manage. Here's three years, off you go, see you later kind of thing. Um, we can help them through that process um, at all stages. Preparing for exams, another big one we, we do, particularly towards the end of semester when students are sort of panicking, realizing they haven't done any work for the last 12, 13 weeks. Um, we can certainly uh, talk them through how to make the most out of their study time and things like that. But, you know, stressing obviously that, you know, exam prep really starts week one, but we, we know students and the reality is, you know, we, we can provide a service when, when they need it, when they're starting to panic a little bit. Improving academic English language skills. We do do a, a a fair bit around that in terms of you know providing feedback and assignments so we certainly uh you know provide help there but i wouldn't say that we're about english language skills it's more about academic english and there is a distinction there so we're not really sort of going to break down their grammar and their 
and punctuation and things like that, even though we will comment on that sometimes if, if it's getting in the way of their academic English, but mostly it's around, you know, signposting, linking, argument development, uh, good paragraph structure, good structure to something like an essay or something like that. That's what we're more about, that real sort of value add uh, commentary. Um, how to give good oral presentations. We certainly will help students with that. Uh, we will sometimes sit down with them and let get, get them to present, and then we'll, we'll provide some feedback on that, um, talk to them about their slides, all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of students who do take that up, particularly the, the, the research students. We've had a, a lot of them come to us as well, you know, particularly when they're preparing for things like the three-minute thesis and, and things like that. How to work well in groups. We know that group work is a major component of some particular disciplines and, and, and subjects. So we will talk to students about how to get the most out of that, how to manage that, particularly if you've got a, a large group or, or problematic members in your group or whatever it happens to be. Um, we can certainly guide them through that process. Um, and we also, you know, provide workshops on that as well, um, particularly to that we take into courses that might need that because I, I think you have to, in order to give uh, group work assessment, you have to actually provide it some training. So we, we do that as well. How to critically think and plan. Uh, we help students hopefully in that area, uh, particularly about questioning, um, being critical of, of source material and the evidence they're using, particularly in their own work and all their research, um, how to go about that, what that actually looks like. Because we know some, some students are coming from you know, backgrounds where that's not such a thing that you do. You don't question, you don't critically evaluate this uh, to form your own um, you know, synthesized arguments that are evidence-based. Some come to us having never done that before, having never had to reference before. We, we certainly talk students students through that process. Um, how to clarify assignment expectations and help them plan. Uh, obviously, that's sort of those initial stages when a student's looking at their assignment going, I have no idea what they want me to do. I don't even know what, what they're asking here. Uh, and, and look, that can be confusing for some students, even, even students who, uh, you know, have a bit of experience, because sometimes you might get assessment pieces that say, you know, using a literature review, write this report, in an essay format doing blah, blah, blah. And that can be really confusing to a student and really worrying. So we will sort of talk them through that step-by-step step and how to, how to break that down and you know begin to, to work through that process. Obviously developing the numeracy skills, this is mostly David's area. Uh, so he does things like statistics workshops. He works with a lot of uh, EAT based students um, and runs workshops in that area. And it also helps with assignments. Um, I'm not the expert in numeracy, so I couldn't tell you what he really does, but I know that he, he works with a lot of those students and provides a lot of materials as well for them to work through. Um, and we also, you know, talk to students about making the most of the feedback. You know, a lot of the times they might get feedback on an assignment or, or written work, whatever they're doing, and they're sort of like, well, what does that mean? How do I clarify that? What are, what are they actually asking when, when they say that? Because you've got to remember, a lot of times with students, they, they might not be as far along the discipline journey as, say, the person marking. And sometimes it's hard as a person who might be well-traveled in your discipline to sort of think back, what was it like when I first started out and I didn't even know what that meant or what that was? And so when we provide feedback, sometimes to students, that can be as confusing as the task itself. So sometimes we, we can help sort of sit them down and go through turn it in reports and, and feedback from the assignment and sort of say, well, I think here you can see you've done this and the tutor said this or, or whatever maybe they're, they're kind of focusing on this and this but obviously you know we refer them generally back to the tutor or the the course coordinator to provide clarification but sometimes that's not always possible you know you guys I know are busy and you might have 200 odd students in your course it's very difficult to give that that really personalized feedback to them um, particularly if you've got 20 30 students come back questioning something or or other like that um, so, so we can certainly um, help out with that so types of support generally and how we offer that we have the, as i said we have coursework workshops where we we're either generic workshops or we can get embedded in courses either through tutorials or even in the lectures where we talk about certain skills you know we might come in and for one of the tutes or one of the lectures and sort of talk about hey this is how you write a good critically you know uh written essay or something like that and we spend some time on that maybe work through some examples with the students so that that's generally what that embedded looks like as I spoke about before, HDR workshops through the CDF. So we run those all the time um, for the research students and they generally come, come to those. And um, we generally will work with the students one-on-one -on -one after that at some point. 
One-on-one -on -one consultations, uh, obviously the students are able to book us through Student Hub um, and through the website on MyUQ. And those are for generally one hour consultations uh, for face-to-face -face or Zoom appointments, depending on what you know, the student wants. Uh, and they just choose which learning advisor they want to come see and that they sort of bring their work along or come chat to us about whatever issue they're having. And they generally get about six appointments per semester. Um, but look, we can do things about that if we think the student needs more help or whatever it is. So that, that's not sort of, but that's a good number that we sort of try to stick to as much as possible. Because once a student comes to us once, they generally go, wow, this is a great service. And they want to keep coming back as much as they can. We have to sort of make that equ equitable, um, as, as I said, 50,000 students. Uh, online resources, we, we just had a look at that on the MyUQ website. Please have a look at that yourself if you're interested. And that way you might be able to better uh, refer students to that when, when you think, hey, they need some help with this or I'm concerned about this aspect. So please, please do that. And obviously the workshops in terms of what we do run, um, it, again, through MyUQ, you can look at what, what's coming up um, and students just tend to book themselves into those and either turn up face-to-face -face or, or come along to the Zoom uh, workshops. We've just obviously run the O-Week ones that we just ran last week. They were pretty well attended. Um, and as the semester goes on, we do tend to run less and less, but there are uh, a lot of different things happening even in the next sort of two, three weeks that a lot of students should be aware of. Um, and we're gonna sort of talk about some of those, particularly the programs that we run. So we run different types of programs that would be a series of workshops over a series of days, depending on, on what the students wanna do. And they will all generally be recorded anyway. So if the students can't make it, they can sort of access those materials on a Blackboard website that we curate as well. So there's the Jumpstart Academic Preparation Program. We don't do too much in that one. That's more of a social kind of program, but we do have, David, I, I know comes goes in there and does one uh, particular lecture on study skills. We have the post-grad uh, JSAP program. Now that's more of an academic program that we do run and that's a series of workshops across a whole day on different aspects of coming back or and doing that research on um, that coursework master's program from you know uh, assignments, time management, reading, note taking, all that type of stuff. So we run that across a day. Uh, the tertiary writing program. Uh, that's generally run, um, I think it's starting either this week or next week, and we run a series of workshops on different aspects of writing at a tertiary level. Um, everything from, you know, starting out with a paragraph, what that looks like, right through to synthesizing evidence within that paragraph and constructing an argument. Uh, that particular TWP, that's aimed at more has Bell, Habs, Med students. Uh, and But there's its counterpart, which is the TPP, which is basically the same program, but more geared towards those science science and sort of the ES student, the STEM students, if you like. Uh, that's generally what that one's um, aimed at. And Kevin and David run that particular one. Um, we have the finish that thesis, which is something we do with the graduate school. That's for the late stage HDR students who, who, who need some help with their thesis. We have Master in the Right staff. That's generally for mid canature sort of HDR students who are sort of really thinking about thesis writing for the first time, although I probably should have been thinking about it earlier, but that's okay. And IAP, which is another introductory academic program, which we just finished up before O Week. That's a four week program that we run um, for the Australian Awards students. So these international students that have won scholarships, they come to Australia. The government says, hey, well, we need to prepare these students before they start studying here. Uh, and we do a four week program with them going through all different types of academic skills. And finally, the, well, well, not finally, we have the tertiary transition toolbox. That's for neurodiverse students. That's fairly new. Um, that's for helping those students transition uh, into to university, into a tertiary learning institution. Um, and that's been run for the first time this semester. So we'll, we'll see how the feedback is on that. But hopefully that's something that we can further develop. And finally, this is something new that's also being trialed this semester. Myself and, and Dr. Eva King, we're doing this one. It's the first steps in research. And this is really aimed towards those honors master students who are really doing their first kind of research uh, thesis or research work. Uh, and this is a support program that, that we've sort of broken up into five or six workshops that run across the semester at different stages, you know, starting with, hey, how do we even begin to choose my, my topic and, and refining that down and approaching a supervisor right through to literature review, to thesis writing, drafting, um, to editing, proofreading, all the way through to, hey, bring your, bring your thesis along and let's, let's have a quick look at it. So that's something new that we're trialing this semester and hope. And look, it seems to be well attended. We've only run one of those so far and we had quite a lot of students turn up to that one. So hopefully that's something that's going to be around. So finally, just quickly, 
Um, in terms of the support we offer staff, now this is more about your course coordinators, your lecturers, because obviously when they're setting up the course, they might uh, want us to come and, and help them. So these are all the things that we generally do within those courses. Now, I don't want to go too much into those because uh, for a lot of you, that that's kind of already set up in terms of the courses. Um, you guys being tutors, you sort of step into a role. Uh, but what I will say is the main thing that I want you guys to focus on as tutors is knowing that we exist. You know, that's really important because um, I remember when I was a tutor in the courses here at UQ, I had no idea that, that the learning advisors existed. I didn't know that the students could go to this help. I didn't know that I could refer students to this help. And if I had known, I would have made a, a lot more use of it. It would have been really handy. Um, even when I was lecturing, I still didn't know that this kind of support was available. Um, so what I would say is, as tutors is understanding that it's out there, um, that there's support for these students, it, it, you know, because I know you guys are busy and you're going to have a lot to do. But if you think, hey, this student could really benefit from someone talking to them about how to reference and, and, and critically evaluate sources and synthesize that into their work, hey, I know the learning advisors are learning advisors are available. Hey, I'll send that student to student services. Or actually, you know, or I've got all my students are now working in groups and doing group work. Hey, I know that there's workshops on that. I know the learning advisors talk about that. Great. I can suggest that they access those materials. So just knowing that can make a huge difference to, 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 to how these students that well, hopefully the success that these students will have in the different things that you will be involved with them in. And most of that's going to be around probably written assessment, but sometimes present presentations and things like that. Um, how are we going for time? Just let me check. Oh, so we've only got a few minutes left. So I don't want to talk too much. Um, I just sort of quickly wanted to sort of introduce you to the team, what we do, or well, the types of things that we do, and sort of then open up to questions, because I know last time I sort of ran out of time for questions, and I know there were some really good questions. So I just was, yeah, wanted to open it up a bit earlier this time for questions, and let's see how we go. Oops, I noticed in chat we've already got a couple, so I might just address those quickly first. Um, if anyone has any questions, oh, that's the first screen. <laughs> where is the learning support uh, physically based building? Yep. So where we generally will see students in the student central, the new student central that's, that's obviously purposely being built. Um, but we actually sit across the road in, I think it's 42. So we're kind of across the road from Italy as well. Um, we're sort of a triangle there. But student central is where we will see students. In terms of the workshops themselves, we will run those generally either online or through things like workshop B, workshop A, which are just, again, across the road there from Student Central, just underneath the Mass and uh, Physics building, I think it is. Is that the Mass Physics Annex? Yeah, just under there. Okay, any other questions? That was either incredibly informative or not. <laughs> I think it was very informative. <laughs> what is the best link contact to give the student to contact? I would say the most, uh, the best link would be to send them to that study skills page because nine times out of 10, uh, they'll probably find something there that will help them straight away. And that that's always really important that they feel like, oh, here's something I can use straight away. Um, and generally, if they tend to dig, they can go, oh, actually, there's this, I can go to this workshop as well, or I can go and see a learning advisor directly because I think this doesn't quite cover what my question is, or I want, you know, a, a greater level of support or, or, or help. Um, so I would send them straight away to that UQ study skills page. I think that's a link that you probably want to include on any sort of first tutorial slides or something like that, and, and sort of show them what's actually there. Um, I think they'd be, you know, um, surprised. Uh, another question here. Sorry, it's not a, oh, quite a right. question, that's Michael. Right. I'm just, right. I'm just, I'm just working the next um, session no about um, student access plans and everything that anybody might like to like to know about that as yeah, well, that, that, which is just fine. on this same link. Yeah, that's fine. Any other questions? Otherwise, how are we going for time? We might as well. No. Um, very helpful. Lots of people. That's fine. So look, what I would say is if you do have any questions in the future about uh, anything in terms of what we do, what we don't do or anything like that, either check out that those student um, support pages in terms of the study skills or just send us one of, uh, just send anyone on the team a quick email or come st chat to someone at Student Central. We're always happy to let you know what's available. 
Excellent. All right. And we're here. Obviously, many of you would be students yourself. So if you're doing anything postgraduate or anything in terms of, you know, HDR or something like that, we're here to help you as well. So, OK, so we do cover the spectrum of students. Excellent. All right. Well, I guess I'll leave it there, Karen, and we can sort of get set up for the next speaker. OK, thank you so much, Michael. Not much appreciated. Cheers. And uh, just responding to a chat. Uh, Emma, uh, Emma, thanks for your email. Um, yes, we will be recording this next session uh, and um, we can distribute it uh, for sure. But anybody else, please feel free to stay in this, um, this meeting. Uh, and the next section is very much about student access plans uh, and the tutor kind of the tutor role in delivering these. So it also promises to be interesting given the massive increase in uh, student access plans over the last two or three years. So it's something that uh, every tutor should understand and know about. <clears throat>